Welcome to the Attic of Orphan Pictures. I'm your host, Philip Mershon. Today, we have a fun wartime musical comedy from Republic Pictures in 1942 called Johnny Doughboy. And I'm going to put a big old asterisk next to that word fun. And I'll have more on that in a minute. It stars Jane Withers and Jane Withers. Yes, Jane plays a dual role. Jane Withers is a name that is too seldom remembered these days, or if she's remembered at all by someone of my age group, it's typically as Josephine the Plumber in the Comet Cleanser commercials all through the 60s and 70s. But by the time our picture came out, Jane was already a veteran of her own radio show at the age of three in her hometown of Atlanta, and she had just finished up a seven-year film contract at 20th Century Fox. And even though most people offer up the name of Shirley Temple when thinking of a 30s child star, our Janie was holding her own, making in the late 30s the top 10 box office list two separate years. Tell you why I like Jane so much. It's that underdog thing again. Yes, Shirley was the queen of the main Fox lot over in Century City, and Jane was relegated to the Fox B lot, which was actually the original Fox lot dating back to 1917 on Western and Sunset in Hollywood. But truth be told, and this is no slight against Shirley, Jane was talented at many more things and had a broader acting range. She wrote the story to the last film to fulfill her contract at Fox. Here's the kind of professional she was. When she got the comic cleanser campaign, she took a crash course in plumbing because she said she felt like she needed to look like she knew what she was doing on camera. Now, on to our picture. It was Withers' first picture away from Fox and seemingly marrying art and life, she plays Anne Winters, a child picture star who's now 16 and fed up to here with kitty roles. Of course, her manager and the studio don't see it that way and so Anne runs away. And on the lam, in her snappy convertible, she has a terrific solo on a Julie Stein, Sammy Kahn song called Baby's a Big Girl Now. And she swings it. In the vernacular of the day, she really puts this number over. Meanwhile, Jane is in the dual role of Penny Ryan, who shows up on the scene as the winner of the National Ann Winters Lookalike Contest and has come to claim her prize of spending two weeks with her idol. Needless to say, hijinks of mistaken identity and comedy ensue. Now, about that asterisk that I put on the fun earlier, well, Art imitating life can be all fun and games, but it can also be a little uncomfortable in the wrong circumstance. One of the plot devices in this picture is a fictional group of former kid stars called the 20 Minus Club, kids that are all under the age of 20 and were on the downhill slide of fame. Like, they supposedly had a club where they would get together and discuss their mutual career woes. And they've come up with this idea to help spark their comeback. At this time, in real life, in, in the middle of World War II, there was a group of two dozen stars called the Hollywood Victory Caravan that went on a 12-city tour performing and raising funds for the Army and Navy Relief Society. And so our under-20 kids decide to mount a junior Victory Caravan. And this sets up the big musical production number at the end of the picture. Thing is, their financial backer says that he won't produce if they don't have a big name, and so they're appealing to Anne to star in their show. They're desperate, like only career actors needing a comeback can be. And I suppose none of this would be so unnerving if they hadn't cast real former kid stars on the skids from stardom in it. There's Spanky and Alfalfa from The Little Rascals, Singing Prodigy and former star Bobby Breen, Cora Sue Collins, Baby Sandy, Bobby Coogan, and a bunch of others speaking dialogue and singing songs about being has-beens. And indeed, this would be Bobby Breen and Baby Sandy's last movie appearances. I honestly don't know what Republic and the producers and the writers were thinking. 
Who knows? Stardom is and fame are such mysterious and elusive commodities. Maybe the powers that be at Republic honestly thought or at least hoped that this might be a break for these people. The ship had sailed for many of them two and three and four years before, so I'm guessing the kids themselves hoped that it could spark a career refresh, and if not, at least it was another week or so of paychecks. And Jane herself? I'm sure she was honestly hoping to help her friends. Aside from the odd plotting and casting, the picture is a great deal of World War II cheerleading propaganda and fun. There's the always great William Demarest and the always great Ruth Donnelly on board. The male lead is Henry Wilcoxon. Oh, and if you watch the very first episode of this, this show, Gangs Inc., starring Joan Woodbury, then I want to tell you Woodbury and Wilcoxon were off-screen real-life husband and wife. We're uniting families here on the Attic of Orphan Pictures. But now it's time to put down your riveting gun and fluff up your shoulder pads for Johnny Doughboy. Millions come, a few to find a pot of gold, others to find a cauldron of disillusionment, but all to find a land of enchantment. This is Hollywood Boulevard, the famous Grauman Chinese theater, where stars are born and stars are forgotten. Ciro's Cafe, nightly gathering place of Hollywood's great. Mocambo, the Brown Derby, world's mecca of autograph hunters. And now we turn toward the homes of the people who inhabit this land of make-believe. And on our left is the home of one of Hollywood's greatest stars, Hollywood's own little girl, the lovely, talented Ann Winters. What's that, Harry? The screenplay for your next picture, Annie. And it's wonderful. What's the name of it? Why, uh, uh... Anne of Honeysuckle Farm. Isn't that dandy? Another kid picture. Harry, I told you. Here, let me see it. Uh, no, you don't. This is my new suit. Well, I won't do another kid picture, and that's final. But, Annie, you are a kid, a child. I am not. I'm 16 years old, and I'm a woman. And that brings up another point. From now on, I intend to be treated like a woman. I want to go on like other girls my age. I want to have dates. I want to have boyfriends. And... Shh, don't talk that way, Annie. Be quiet. What if your fans should hear you? Oh, I hope they do. You've kept me shut up in this place like a backward child. But there's someone to find out I don't talk baby talk anymore. You made me break up with Johnny Kelly. You're not an agent, you're a, you're a nursemaid. But you can find yourself another baby. You can go to a party if you'll just make this one picture for Uncle Harry. The kid picture is out. But Annie, they've written up your age in this one. Instead of a girl of 10, you're 12. Tell them to make it double or nothing. Now, Annie. And give me John Wayne for a leading man. Annie. And call it Anne of Honeysuckle Murder Farm. <laughs> and then I'll make it. But this is a wonderful story. They had their best writers on it. The least you can do is read it. All right. I don't like it. Oh, Andy. Andy, just read it once. Andy. You bring me the romantic lead and harvest the wild corn or a reasonable facsimile and I'll play it. But Honeysuckle Farm is out. Out, out. And you'll be out, out, out of pictures. You'll be suspended. Good. Maybe when I'm 45, they'll let me play ingenues. Harry. Now, Ann, you make this one for me and I promise. Here, look. 
I promise and I hope I fall on my face if I don't. I spoke to you. What's this flypaper salesman bothering you about? He wants me to do another kid picture. Ah, oh, Biggie, try to make her understand. It ain't me. The studio will suspend her if she don't. Look, they send her out a nice script, written at great expense, printed on the very best of paper, and she holds your nose at it. Dear, I know how you feel. But I have to agree with Harry that at 16, you're still a young girl. You'll have plenty of time to be grown up. For the present, I think you should trust the studio and Harry to choose your parts for you. You know, after all, a misstep now, it could ruin your career. You too. Well, you may be a good secretary and a good teacher, but you don't know anything about a woman's heart. And if having a career means that I'll have to be shut up in a day nursery for the rest of my life and, and never live like a human being or have any fun, then I don't want any career. Now, Annie. Because, because, well, I, I may not look like Hetty Lamar, but I feel like Veronica Lake. <laughs> I love VJ. Maybe we could give her a break. Make her 14. You know, not 15, not 16, but maybe 14. Hmm? Wrong number. Ah, uh, honey. I knew you were only kidding. I knew you wouldn't let Harry down, baby doll. And of honeysuckle farm. Living and breathing. Oh, no. I'm Penelope Ryan of Oriole, Nebraska. <laughs> what an actress. What an actress. And without reading the script, just smelling it. <laughs> Harry. What's the matter? Look. What? Come here, look out the window. What? A, out the window? Bye. Goodbye, honey. Was that? It was Ann. Who'd you think it was? Then what's that? Me? Oh, I'm Penelope Ryan of... I know, I know. Canary, Nebraska. Oh, no. Oreo, Nebraska. All right, all right. Oreo, woodpecker, sparrow. What's the difference? A bird's a bird. Shut up. You're frightening the child. Don't pay any attention to him. He's cynical about birds. A fugitive from the Bronx. Well, with all my troubles, have I got time to watch impersonations? Of course, maybe you don't remember, Mr. Fabian, that you yourself sponsored a contest among the Ann Winters fan clubs with a two weeks vacation in this house as the prize for the girl who looked the most like Ann Winters. And I won it. So, well, here I am. Yeah, here you are. Oh, what a business, what a business. Well, uh, something's come up. Uh, Miss Winters, she's expecting a, a, a relatives, lots of relatives. You'll be just as comfortable in a hotel, won't you? Mr. Fabian, the delegation from the 20 Miners Club is here to see Miss Winters. I put them in the library. What shall I tell them? Oh, tell them, tell them, tell them some Peter Rabbit stories. Very good, sir. Biggie, will you answer it, please? Hello, Miss Winters' residence. Mr. Fabian? Mr. Fabian just died, Mabel. Oh, no, he can still talk. It hasn't changed him a bit. It's VJ. Hello, V.J. Oh, yes, fine, fine. What? Hmm? Oh, yes, V.J. Wardrobe at 9 o'clock. Sound test at 10 o'clock. Still department at 2.30. She'll be there, V.J. Goodbye. How am I going to get Ann back by tomorrow? You're not. She left this note. Uh, dear Harry and Biggie, I am going away for a two-week vacation, maybe more, during which I'm going to live my own life. If you try to find me or bring me back or tell my parents, I will never come home and will never make another picture. I mean it. My love to you, Biggie. About you, Harry, I don't know. Anne. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Fabian. 
What now? The 20 Miners Club. 20 Miners Club, wardrobe test, fan clubs. What am I supposed to do about it? I'm going crazy. Get them out of here. You get out of here. Everybody get out of here. Can I divide her up? Can I have her in six places at once? Do they think she comes in carbon copies? Yeah. Hey, come back, kid. What do you want? Oh, Penelope. That's a lovely name. Do people call you Penny? Mm hmm? Yes. Well, Penny, um, I can't let you meet Ann Winters today, but how would you like to be Ann Winters for one day? Now, wouldn't that be a thrill to tell the kids back in Meadowlark? Uh, Oreo. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, I'd love it, but... Oh, oh I wouldn't dare. I'm... Sure you would, and you can start right now. I'm going to let you interview a delegation from the 20 Miners Club. Well, isn't that the club of former movie stars under 20 years old? That's right. What can I say to them? Now, that's just that I don't want you to say anything, except yes or no, of course. And you watch me, and I'll shake my head which one you are to say. That's just so we won't be unfair to Miss Winters, you know. Oh. <laughs> Hello, kids. Hello. Hello. Hi, Anne. How are you? Gosh, Bobby Breen, Corsu Collins, Baby Sandy. Spanky McFarlane and Bobby Coogan. May I have your autograph? Now, Ann, there's no time for joking. You'll have to make this fast, kids, because Ann's very busy today. Look, Ann, all of us down at the club, you know, there's Butch and Buddy and Alfalfa and Johnny Kelly and... Say, you remember Johnny Kelly. And a lot of others who used to be, well, where you are now. Yes, and we're all pulling for you. We're glad you're on top, Ann. That's very nice of you, kids, and Ann appreciates your interest, don't you, Ann? So goodbye, and it was very kind of you to come over. Goodbye. But, but, but we haven't told you what we came here for, Mr. Fabian. Oh, there's more? Yes. You see, Anne, we got pretty tired of having all the producers in Hollywood tell us we're, well, too old. So we decided if Hollywood doesn't want us anymore, maybe Uncle Sam does. So we cooked up a swell show. Good music, a lot of acts, everything. We decided to call our show the Junior Victory Caravan. Wonderful. Didn't they like that? Not exactly. You see, they thought the idea was good enough, but, well, I guess Uncle Sam is a little like the movies. He doesn't want has either, even young ones. They told us to get a star name for the lead in our show, and then they'll take it. So, uh, that's why we're here, Ann. It's up to you. Will you be our star? Me? Oh, but of <coughs> course... I can't. <laughs> in my makeup cause baby's a big girl now my pulse was always normal it's kicking up around no more details they're informal baby's a big girl now the gossips all may tattle if i'm too indiscreet who cares i'm off to battle the wolves that i'm dying to meet Ow! It's no more milk for me, sir. That's for the cat's meow. Milk won't help me on this spree, sir. You can keep your contented cow. Cause baby's a big girl now. This course that I'm pursuing may wrinkle mother's brow. But I know just what I'm doing. Baby's a big girl now. They'll have to caviar me. I'm sick of kitty chow. Caviar can never harm me. Oh, baby's a big girl now. I know that I've got glamour. I know Red Riding Hood. And though it ain't good grammar, whoa, I've got it bad and it's good. A violet that shrinking gets nowhere you'll allow. And in spite of what you're thinking, I'm set to take a bow. Baby's a big girl now. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Police tonight are scouring the mountain district of the west and southwest, seeking a giant killer who today escaped from the state penitentiary in a stolen black sedan. He is six feet, two inches, third finger, right hand missing. He is armed.
I've just begun to wake up. I'm gonna live and how. There's a difference in my makeup. Baby's a big girl now. My pulse was always normal. It's kicking up around. No. Oh, please. Not now. What do you want? Isn't anyone at home? Does I look like I'm someplace else? No. I mean, well, my car ran out of gasoline. I was looking for the inn. If I could get a little gas here. Ain't no gasoline here. And the boss man, he done took the car and gone. Oh. Well, then I, I guess I better start walking to the inn. Come back here, child. I know you ain't got good sense, or you wouldn't be rambussing around in these woods this time of night. But the inn's clear around the other end of the lake. Seventeen miles walking distance. Seventeen miles? Oh, but... Do you want a catamount to gnaw a leg off of you out in these woods? Golly, no. Well, get in the house here. I'm gonna put you to bed. So you won't be around here troubling people. And then in the morning, you can chase around and get all the gasoline you want. You're quite sure it's all right for me to stay here tonight? Of course I was quite sure. I run this house to suit myself. Come on. Well, aren't there any lights? No, something's wrong with the light. The boss man got to fix it when he gets back. That is, if he ever gets back. Blame thing. Push a button and something goes, pss, pss, bluey, and the lights go out. Now you hop in here and get some sleep. Ain't nothing gonna hurt you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, who are you? Who are you? Oh, no, you don't. I asked you first, little girl. I resent your familiarity. And I don't like being called a little girl. Forgive me, madam. What are you doing here? One thing, it's my house. My name is Oliver Lawrence. Well, then, why were you wandering around out there? I was fixing the lights. Fixing the lights? With your hands? With my own two hands. Little dreaming that I was frightening a child. Uh, a lady out of her wits. Oh, but I wasn't really frightened much. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Or should you? Oh, I think it'll be all right. Just for a moment. Just in case it's a long story I have to listen to. Well, you, you see, I, I was on my way to the inn for a vacation when I lost my way and ran out of gasoline. And, well, here I am. And then your housekeeper insisted that I stay until morning. You know, Mammy's perfection at always doing exactly the right thing never ceases to amaze me. How beautifully put. You don't talk at all like a... a well, a... a mountaineer? <laughs> well, I am, though. Oh, no, you're not. And didn't you say your name was Oliver Lawrence? I did. Why, of course, the playwright. That's right. Now, about your present predicament, Miss... Uh, or is it Mrs.? Uh, Miss. There must be somebody we should call. Next of kin, relatives or something. No. Uh, no one's interested. That is... You don't know who I am, do you? Why, no, I don't think I do. Should I? No. Let's just leave it that way for the time being, please. It's exciting, don't you think? Very. Well, I still don't know your name. I've got to call you something. Oh. Uh, well, you may call me, uh, Veronica. Veronica. Good night, Veronica. Oh, and, um... Uh, yes? I think you'll be a lot more comfortable if you took off your shoes. Oh. Good night, Mr. Lawrence. What do you think you're doing? Maybe you done forgot you have house gear. Oh, but she's still asleep, isn't she? I should say not. She's been up for one hour. And she done told me she ain't gonna send me that new dress if I don't fix a place for her at breakfast with you. And what new dress was this, may I inquire? The one she's gonna send me if I do fix a place for her at breakfast. <laughs> Good morning, Oliver. You don't mind if I call you Oliver, do you? Oh, I'm delighted, uh, uh, Veronica. Oh, I, I had the most wonderful night's sleep. You can't imagine what it feels to be, to be away from the worries of civilization. Oh, were you going to work through breakfast? I'm sorry. Oh, it's very unimportant work, I assure you. And as dry as that cereal you're going to eat, compared with your company. Oh, <laughs> how sweet. You know, I, I asked Mammy if I could have breakfast with you because, well, before I went over to the inn, I, I wanted a chance to thank you. Oh, yes, now, about the inn, Veronica, it's been closed for renovations. But I'd be delighted if you'd care to spend your vacation here. Here? Oh, really? That, that would be wonderful. But do you think it would be all right? I mean, oh, probably. You know how some people... I think it would be all right. After all, Mammy, perfection at everything else, probably has some proficiency as a chaperone, too. Chaperone is right. I'm probably one of the chappiest chaperones you ever did see. I can give it to you light, medium, or well done. But I promise you, if you want it well done, you ain't gonna hardly know you're in the same district together. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I would suggest... I think medium would be about right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too wonderful. I, I can't believe it. But I'll love every minute of it. Just think we can fish and swim and, and hike and... Do you like to dance, Oliver? Oh, yes, I love dancing, Veronica. But you see, I have to spend an awful lot of time in town. Oh. <laughs> well, I expect we'll find a little time left over for your athletic program. Oh, wonderful. Then I'll get ready. <laughs> What's amusing you so much, Moonbeam? Mr. Oliver, it's sure gonna be a picture. 
seeing you romping over the landscape, swimming and fishing and stuff. But you're gonna have to protect your own self, cause I'm a sitting chaperone, not a walking one. <laughs> Phone I could use. Oh, yes, dear. In the living room. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Hello, Biggie. This is Anne. Oh, I'm having the most wonderful time. Promise me you won't do anything to spoil it, and I'll tell you all about it. But do, but, but do you think? Y yes, of course I do, dear. Oh, Oliver Lawrence. All right. Then I won't worry about it. Yes, I promise. Was that V.J.? Who? V.J., V.J. V is in, uh, Veronica? Could be. Hello, Ann. Ann! What? I... I didn't mean to yell at you, Ann. You don't want me to come in, or... You don't want to speak to me, that's okay, but... If, if I don't want to speak to you, well, I'm very sorry, but I don't even know. Why, you're Johnny Kelly, aren't you? I remember you. You played the lead in the Dolly Dimple series with... Uh, with, with me. Look, Ann, will you quit kidding? This is serious. Those kids want you to come down and take a look at the show. Well, I, I really don't know whether I can or look, not. I know you don't want to see me. Oh. I wouldn't come to you like this if it was for myself, but it means everything to the rest of them. Will you do it? Of course I will. Oh, swell. Come on, let's get going. When they don't pick your option up, then life becomes a bitter cup. I know, because I've had to sip the brew. The, the brew. brew. We've, We've had, had to sip the brew. When they told me the awful truth, I forced a smile, a smile of you. But it's really tough to smile when you are through. It's tough. It's tough when you are through. And though I really should complain, we'd much rather sing this refrain. All done, all through, and we were only starting. All done, all through. Going back to kindergarten. Once I had a chauffeur and a mansion. Chocolate ice cream cone. No vanilla. All done. All through. And we've got a lot of love for all. Take it.
Gee, kids, I think your show has everything. It's really terrific. So what about it, Anne? Will you come with us? Of course I will. Oh, we're in. Um, we're in. <laughs> hey, my turn. I'm cutting in. Um, We've got a surprise for you, one you'll really like. Oh, wonderful. Johnny wrote it just for the show. He's going into the army himself, you know. It takes a guy like I to make the guns go boom, boom. It takes a guy like I to make the cannons roar. See the guy with all the braid, long before he made the grade. He was a small guy, a small guy like I. It takes a guy like I to make the planes go zoom, zoom. It takes a guy like I to even up the score. When the president asked for a hundred thousand planes to fly in the sky, he was talking to a guy like I. Now, here's where you come in, Anne. What? Who, who me? That's right. Here, I'll start over. Oh, but... But, but I, I can't. Of course you can. She acts like she's got stage fright. Anne Winters. Maybe she doesn't like the number. Oh, Johnny, I do. I, I'm crazy about it. But don't you get it, Anne? It's the number you're going to do in the show, alone and as duet with Johnny. Now, look, this first copy is for you. Oh, I don't want any number. I mean, oh, I, I can't even be in the show. But, Anne, you, you just said you would be. You can't back out now, you... I'm sorry, Bobby. I said yes without thinking. There are hundreds of reasons why I can't. Uh, the, the studio, well, you know how studios are. They, they just won't let me. And... and you can't afford to be tied up with a bunch of kids, no matter how much it means to them. As a matter of fact, Bobby, you're right. I really can't afford to be tied up with a bunch of kids. I have to think of my career. And it's unfortunate that I got carried away and said I would when I can't, but... Well, that's the way it is. Me my eyes closed. But, gee, we can go on with the show, can't we? Maybe somebody will want it. We aren't just gonna bust up everything. The show, the club. Look, kids, we might as well face it. We got a swell show and nobody to look at it. Dear, I'm worried about you. You didn't need a thing. Yeah, what's the matter, kids? You ain't been here long enough to have ulcers. Now you take me. I got eight known varieties, and two that ain't been cataloged. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Really, I am, but I... Oh, I just wasn't hungry. Are you ill? Oh, no. Oh, I guess I've just sort of lost my appetite. Do you mind if I go to my room? No, go along, dear. Thanks. Good night. Harry, I'm worried about that child. She's sick just out of pure unhappiness. We're not being fair to her. What do you mean, not being fair to her? The kid's having the time of her life, seeing the studios, vacation paid for. And today I gave her five bucks. Say, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe she ate five bucks worth of candy. Maybe that's what's the matter with her. Holy guts! You think I ought to get a doctor? She's got to be on her feet tomorrow. Look, giving away five bucks is more likely to kill you than the kid. There's nothing the matter with her stomach. It's her heart. She's disappointed in her vacation, in the town, in Anne, and everything. And it makes me a little ill, because I'm beginning to like that child almost as much as I like Anne. Yeah, I like it myself. Swell kid, but she can't leave for a while. I need her. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you, Hattie. You're such a great humanitarian. You'd feed a kid to the lions just because you can't stand to see hungry lions. been deglamorizing Hollywood this time? Nobody. Honest. Come on, tell Biggie. Is it uh, what caused the sudden loss of appetite at dinner last night? Oh, Miss Bigsworth, I did a terrible thing yesterday. Are the police on your trail? Oh, no. <laughs> you won't laugh about it when I tell you. 
I went down to see the kids' shows. Well, I don't see anything so terrible about that. Just wait. When they asked me again if I, well, that is, if Anne would go with them, I forgot all about that Anne's not me and I'm not Anne and, well, I, I said yes. Penny, you shouldn't have. You'll have to tell them differently. Oh, I already did. They gave me some music and told me that that was my song and dance number. Then I remembered I was still Penelope Ryan from Oriole. And that's where I'm going back to, so I won't have to see those kids again. And if that's what Ann would have done to them, then I don't want to see her either. And her fan club back in Oriole can get another president. But darling, it isn't very fair to judge Ann without talking to her. But how can I talk to her? I don't know where she is, and no one else seems to. Oh, what's the use? I know where she is, and I'd like to tell you, but... Uh... When Ann called me from Oliver Lawrence's home up at Lake Arrowhead, I uh, promised her I wouldn't let anyone know where she's spending her vacation. I can't uh, break my promise now, can I? Oh, Miss Bigsworth. Oh, Biggie, <laughs> you're wonderful. <laughs> If someone new should fall for you, I'll know you're not to blame. Your heart is true, you love me too, but darling, just the same. You better not get that lip lipstick on somebody else. You better not stroll those dark, dark lanes with somebody else. Don't let me find I've slipped your mind before I count to three. You better not roll those blue, blue eyes at anyone but me. <laughs> you better not park that Jeep Jeep car with somebody else. You better not spend that dough, dough boy on somebody else. If someone new should fall for you, I'll know you're not to blame. Your heart is true, you love me too, but darling, just the same. Oh, you better not plan that dream, dream house with somebody else. You better not walk that long, long aisle with somebody else. Don't let my spy say you're the guy found a rose across the sea. You better not roll those blue, blue eyes at anyone but me. Say, pretty soon you'll have to tell us where we're going. Oh, are we near the lake? Mm -hmm. We have to find out where Oliver Lawrence lives. You know, the playwright. Well, that's easy. I've passed his house a million times in a boat. Well, that's where I want to go. You mean that's who we came all the way up here to see? No, not exactly. It's like I told you. We came up here to see... Uh, the boss. You mean he's up here, huh? Well, um, sort of. Come on, let's hurry. Okay, but... Sometimes you worry me, Ann. Maybe she's bringing us up here to drown us. Kids, listen. Now, all you have to do is wait here until you hear from me. But don't you want us to go with you, Ann, and talk oh. to the boss? No, just wait. Well, all right, but we've only got a four-day food supply. See you later. You try, you know that dough ain't locked. Hello, Veronica. Gee, that's a cute outfit. I don't think I've seen it before. Oh, thank you. Is 
it's all right, Miss Winters. I'm somebody else. Well, thank goodness. What do you want? Well, it, it's quite a long story. You see, I, I'm Penelope Ryan from Oriole, Nebraska. Are you quite sure you're not an Oriole from Ryan, Nebraska? How did you get up here? Who told you I was? I just... I do Kids, they were so wonderful. What has it got to do with me? Well, that's what I'd like to explain about Miss Winters. Just think what it would mean to all of them, appearing at the different camps the Junior Victory Caravan, entertaining our soldiers, and, well, at the same time, having a chance to show what they can do. Well, they've certainly got a good press agent in you, Penny. But what do you want of me? Do they need money? Oh, no, Miss Winters. They want you in the show as their star. Me? Oh, you just got to do it, Miss Winters. Because if you don't, well, then nobody will want the show. But honestly, it means life or death to these kids. They've been kicked around so much, they're ready to admit they're licked. Oh, come now. Don't dramatize it. I feel sorry for those children, and I'm completely familiar with their problem. You're asking an impossible thing. You... You mean you... You won't do it? I mean, I can't. I'm rearranging my life. You see, Penny, I, too, have given the best years of my life to Hollywood. I've been a slave to my motion picture career. But that's all over. From now on, I belong to the theater. But oh, aren't you going to make any more pictures? No, my dear. I'm going to play the lead in Mr. Lawrence's new drama, Cleopatra's Daughter. He's written it especially for me. Well, couldn't you still appear in the kids' show before you're Cleopatra's daughter? Certainly not. I can't afford to risk my career by tying up with a bunch of children. Has been said that. They said you might say that. But I, I couldn't believe it. They? Who's they? Oh. Mr. Fabian and some of the kids. Well, I, I guess there's no use to talk any more about it. But what'll I tell the kids? Tell them anything you want. Tell them I have a previous engagement. Tell them I don't want any part of their show. I don't care. But don't you see? They still think that, that I'm you. Oh, I just can't tell them. Well, that's what you get for letting Harry pass you off for me. That's your problem. Miss Winters, will you tell them? How can I? Well, I, I said I had to come up here to see the boss, and they all came with me. You mean they're up here? Yes, all of them. Spanky and Bobby Breen and Johnny Kelly and... Johnny? He's a nice boy. They're all nice kids, but... Well, I'm sorry. I, I can't help them. Well, maybe after you talk to them, you'll change your mind. And Johnny seems to like you very much. That's sweet. But, Penelope, if you're hinting of romance, well, there's something else you might as well know. You see, Mr. Lawrence and I... You're not engaged. We have an understanding. Oh, uh, young lady, just a moment, please. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself before. I know. You're Oliver Lawrence. You know, you look exactly like Anne. Can I help it? No, I suppose not. I couldn't help overhearing a conversation just now, and I think it's a very fine thing the kids are doing. Is it really a good show? Oh, it's wonderful. What's the difference? There won't be any show now. No, you shouldn't give it up as easily as that. We're not giving it up. Miss Winters just took it away from us. Well, I think she spoke a little hastily. Maybe she'll change her mind. She sounded awfully definite. Supposing I spoke to her. 
Oh, Mr. Lawrence, if you only would. But the kids, what can I tell them? I wouldn't tell them anything for a while. But you see, they're all waiting for me, and, well, if I go back there, I'll, I'll have to tell them something. Now, look. There's a bench at the back of the house, and there's a squirrel there. He's a very amusing fellow. You tell him I said he was to entertain you for a while. I get it. Say, maybe if I blew mess call, sir, might bring a sandwich or something. No, no, Spanky. She said we were to wait, and that's all we're going to do. We can at least cooperate that much. Yeah, sure. If she's playing another joke on us, we can at least cooperate. Yes, it's very important, Mrs. Brown, that she should be here as soon as possible. Forty-five minutes? Oh, fine. Uh, and don't you worry. I'll see she gets back promptly. Goodbye. Yes? Who is it? It's me. Oh, come in, Oliver. Hello. What? You've changed your clothes. Are you leaving? Well, uh, yes, I am shortly. I have to go into town. But first, I want to talk to you, Veronica. Uh, <laughs> or should we just make it Anne, huh? Oh. So you, you know who I am. You've probably known it all the time. Or did you overhear Penelope, that girl and me? Well, both. Then why didn't you say so? Why'd you let me make a fool of myself? Oh, you didn't make a fool of yourself, my dear. But you remember that first night? You said you thought it might be exciting if we played that it didn't matter who you were. I thought it was kind of cute, your wanting to be incognito. I thought it'd be lots of fun. Oh, and it has been fun, Oliver. And exciting and, and wonderful. Well, that's the way I wanted it to stay, Anne. As a matter of fact, your father and I, we've been friends for a good many years now. When you first came up here, I wired him and he agreed with me that the rest and relaxation, nothing but play for a while, probably do you good. But that's the way I intended it to be, Anne. Just play. All a sort of a game. Do you mean I shouldn't have said what I did? Oh, I blame myself, really. It was all entirely my own fault, but... You were such good company, and... Well, hang it all, Anne. You're so young, and I'm... Well, I thought you'd take one look at me and realize... Oliver, you're not being honest with me. Huh? Are you trying to tell me that... that there's another woman? Why... Yes. Yes, there is. Do you... Do you love her very much? Yes, Veronica. Uh, Anne. Oh, Oliver. Oh, Anne, my dear. Don't talk to me now. Darling, are you all right? Oh. Is this... Is... Well, is it? Yes, Anne. This is Jennifer. Jennifer, this is Miss Winters. Hello. Oh! What goes on around here? I, I expected to find you down here with a broken leg or the mumps or something. And what's the matter with her? Well, we just celebrated a couple of birthdays, my dear. Her 16th and your father's 45th. You, Ann. We've been waiting for hours. Where did you get those clothes? Hey, were you crying? No. Oh, I get it. You saw the boss, and it's bad news. The boss? Oh. Oh, yeah, sure, the boss. Oh, it's all right. Don't cry about it. You did all you could. 
Mm-hmm. But I'm glad you told me the news up here alone first, Annie, because, well, it gives me a chance to say a couple of things I might not have the nerve to say in front of the gang. Well, what's that, Johnny? Well, first, thanks a million for me personally, and second, I think you've been swell about the whole thing. I have? A hundred percent swell, just like I knew you'd be. Oh, Johnny, I think you I... You know, most of the kids were against even asking you for help. They said you'd gone high hat and that the only guy you'd help was Ann Winters. Boy, when you turned them down that first time, were they sure of it? But I knew you couldn't have changed that much, Ann. That was Fabian in the studio talking, but not you. Hmm? What did I say? What? I mean, well, what did the kids think I would say? Oh, well, that doesn't sound very good, but... Well, they were sure you'd say you didn't want to be tied up with a bunch of children. Has-beens at that. I told them they were nuts. Why, a guy can't be around the girl as much as I've been around you and not know what she's like. Even though she's brushed them off. But, Johnny, I didn't brush you off. That was Harry, too. Well, I'm glad you said that. See, I've always liked you so much, Ann. Oh, I... I've always liked you, too, Johnny. Well, thanks. That's good news. But I haven't any right to enjoy it with what I've got to tell the others, so... I might as well get started. But where are you going? Back to tell him the boss said no. Oh, but, but the boss didn't say no. I mean, well, he hasn't said anything definite as yet. He hasn't? Are you kidding, Ann? No, really. I, I have to see him again. Well, then there's still a chance. We're, we're still in there pitching. But he still might say no. Still might say yes. But look at you. You're nothing but a private. Politics. Like for me and other Yanks, you're another in the ranks. Why, even I could grab a Jeep and drive it. I'm no Doug MacArthur. That is true. It certainly is. But I'm the kid MacArthur gives his orders to. Listen. It takes a guy like I to make the guns go boom, boom. <laughs> It takes a guy like I to make the cannons roar. Ah! See the guy with all the braid. Hi, Cap. Long before he made the grade, he was a small guy, a fall guy like I. Oh, now, wait a minute, Johnny. It takes a guy like I to make the planes go zoom, zoom. Takes a guy like I to even up the score. And win the war. When the president asked for a hundred thousand planes to fly in the sky, he was talking to a guy like I. It takes a gal like I to stay home writing letters. Dear John, it rained all day. It takes a gal like I to join the USO. Hooray for the USO. If I entertain a guy. Not that. I'll consider it a job. What's more, the army can't harm me, you know. Army, they'll protect you. It takes a gal like I to stay home knitting sweater. Ha, <laughs> you dropped a stitch. And you can wear them when it's 10 degrees below. Oh, it's mighty cold climate. I'll be faithful and true, I promise you. I'll never break down and cry. I won't cry, no, not a gal like I.
goodbye, Johnny. Good luck and thanks. Thanks for everything. Put it in. Aren't you? Wally! When the president has we are wearing, you might guess that you're in Erin. Is it Erin or Loch Lomond? Shh! It's a military secret. As your mayor, tis me duty to present our leading beauty. She will make you feel at home and... Shh! It's a military secret. But there's one thing that I can reveal. We're proud you're here. This proves the way we feel. <laughs> Told you. Now, back to my affection for Jane. And to full disclosure, I want to mention that I've actually met her a couple times at different events, and she's an absolute doll. A couple years ago, she was liquidating a bunch of her personal and collected memorabilia in an estate sale, and I got a couple things. This, boys and girls, is one of Janie's original hand sewn felt appliqued purses from the late 30s. And can't you just see her waltzing into the Brown Derby at 10 years old to have lunch with a photo play columnist and carrying that thing? Hey, it could have happened. You never know what you're going to find here in the attic. Hopefully I'll be able to do show and tell with you again sometime. Meanwhile, thanks very much for tuning in and until next time, so long. <laughs>